Membership websites have a lot of moving parts. So when you're just starting out and you're about to build your membership, there are some key decisions that you need to make about the tech that you're going to use. In today's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, I'm going to talk you through the five biggest tech decisions you need to make when you're first starting out. Here we go. You're listening to the Membership Guys podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now, here's your host, Mike Morrison. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 312 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison, one half of the Membership Guys, and thank you for joining me for the number one show for online membership owners. I truly appreciate each and every one of you and each and every second of your time and attention that you give me week in, week out. If you are new to the show, first of all, welcome. I'm so glad that you found us, but it took you 312 episodes. What's going on? <laughs> I'm just just kidding, of course. I am so, so appreciative that you've decided to spend part of your day with me. If you haven't already done so, make sure that you hit the subscribe button in whatever app you are using to listen to the podcast to ensure that you do not miss a single weekly dose of proven practical tips and advice on growing your membership business. And if you're already a subscriber, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much for continuing to stick with us. For all of your kind words ratings and reviews for the podcast if you have a moment of time spare i would be so so grateful if you could leave us a nice shiny five star rating and a few words about what you like most about the show what you might want to hear more of how the show has helped you in your membership business I read each and every single review and I appreciate each and every single review because it lets us know that we're doing a good job, but also it helps us to reach more people just like you so we can spread the love and we can help everyone grow successful online memberships. And speaking of growing those online memberships, that all starts with getting your membership website built, launched and up and running. And if you're at that stage of your journey, or perhaps you're really, really early on in starting to flesh out your membership idea and you've not yet got to the tech side of things, then today's episode is for you. There are a lot of moving parts when it comes to getting a membership site built. There's so many different systems, platforms, plugins, all that sort of stuff out there that you need to choose from. Are you going down the WordPress route? Are you going with a hosted platform? What should your domain name be? Where do you get your website hosting? Where's your community going to live? All of that sort of stuff. And it can be a minefield trying to navigate all of these decisions and figure out what the right path is in terms of the tech you're going to use and the key decisions that you need to make about your whole setup for your online membership website. So in today's episode, I've singled out five of the biggest of those decisions. These are decisions that can have an impact and repercussions on so many different elements of your membership, how you run it, how you grow it, how your member experience is, all of that sort of stuff. And so you need to think carefully you need to think hard you need to do your research you need to do due diligence not just rely on recommendations from a facebook group or something like that and hopefully the advice i can share with you today will help you to get those decisions right so the first big decision you need to make when starting out is whether or not you want your membership website to be self-hosted or using an online platform so when I say self-hosted, what I mean is you have a website that you set up, you build, you install, you run, all that sort of stuff. On your own web hosting account, you control all of that sort of side of things. You'll probably use something like WordPress, which you install onto your web hosting. You install your plugins, the themes, you set it all up, you configure it. You basically build it yourself or with the help of a developer. That is what you would call a self-hosted website. So the two real options for basically where is where is the site going to live? Who's going to run it? Are self-hosted or a hosted 
platform. So a hosted platform is where essentially someone runs it all for you. You don't need to worry about web hosting. You don't need to worry about installing or even choosing the software. You basically pay a fee to someone else to give you the platform, to give you the tech. So you just sign up, you go in there and you have a section where you add your content. You've got some options about how your site will look and feel. You can choose, you know, things like the price point for your memberships, but all of the tech is dealt with. You just go along, get your account set up, jump in and basically all the tech is handled for you. So that's a hosted platform. Usually you pay for these platforms on subscription. So you'll pay a hundred bucks a month to be able to set up your website on someone else's tech, on someone else's platform. So these are usually the two main choices. You've got self-hosted or hosted platform. When you go down the self-hosted route, usually for a membership site, you'll need to use some sort of content management system, some sort of software that you install onto your own web hosting that will give you the engine that will power your membership. The vast majority of self-hosted membership sites use WordPress. WordPress is the most popular content management system in the world. And a big part of the reason for that is the fact that there's all sorts of add-ons, which are basically just extra bits of functionality that you can install and that just gives you more bells and whistles, more features, more options within your WordPress site. So off the shelf, WordPress is free. It doesn't cost you anything to actually use WordPress itself. And if you're just installing WordPress, that gives you the ability to publish pages and to publish blog posts. And that's pretty much it. So you would then need to go out and get a plugin that will add membership functionality. So the ability to protect some of that content and to then charge people for access to it. If you want a community, you might then also need to go and get a community plugin that will, again, add functionality such as the ability to have a little section of your website where people can post discussions, they can chat, they can have conversations and so on. If you're offering courses, then again, you would go and you would get a plugin to add that functionality too. So the self-hosted route is really about getting this kind of basic engine, the core, which is WordPress, and then deciding what features do I need? What functionality do I want to add? What bells and whistles would I like on my website? And then you go off and you pick and choose a variety of different plugins, of different add-ons that will put that functionality at your fingertips within your WordPress site. If you want the ability for people to fill in a contact form, you get a contact form plugin. If you want social media sharing buttons on your pages, again, you need to go and get a plugin. So you're kind of assembling all these ingredients. You're doing it yourself, but most of them, they're already built, right? You don't need to code them yourself. You don't need to create them yourself. You're just taking little snippets of functionality, little pre-made bells and whistles and plugging them into your site. So you have a lot of control, you have a lot of flexibility, but also there's a lot of little small decisions you need to make. There's, again, it's all those spinning plates. And if you're new to just anything related to doing business online or running a website, it can be a little overwhelming if you don't have support from a community like Membership Academy, from a developer who will help you with it. So that's the self-hosted route. With the self-hosted route, you are in control you get to pick and choose the individual elements, the different features and functionality, and you can tailor the tech that you use to your individual needs. The trade-off for that is the time, a little extra complexity, and then of course you need to juggle that. You need to manage that on an ongoing basis. If you go down the other route, which is a hosted platform, you have none of that. And that's a good and a bad thing. It's good because you don't need to worry about, okay, well, what features do I need? Which of the thousands of plugins that I could use for this feature do I want to buy and do I want to install? And how do I make sure they all work together and keep everything up to date? You don't need to worry about any of that with a host of platform. But the downside of that is you don't have any control over any of that either. So if you decide that within your membership, you want the ability to give people coupons so to provide coupons that your potential customers can use to get a discount on your membership 
if your hosted platform, if the platform you're using doesn't have that as a feature, then tough. There's no ability for you to just go off and find a way to add this feature into the platform. You are limited by the features and the functionality that your hosted platform of choice provides to you. So that extends to particular abilities for your website. It extends to uh, how much control you have over the look and the feel. You're not going to have as much flexibility and as much ability to totally customize and tailor things to your own need. So there's definitely a trade-off there. It's a lot less hassle, a lot less convenient, a lot less requirement for you to even think about anything tech-related. However, the, uh, the reason why you have that peace of mind, that ability to abdicate any relationship to tech, is because someone else is in control. And when you're on a hosted platform, the features that they offer are what you are stuck with, essentially. So that's really that first big decision. Are you going to go self-hosted or are you going to go with a hosted online platform? Self-hosted is usually WordPress with a membership plugin, such as MemberPress, Wishlist Member, Paid Memberships Pro, Restrict Content Pro, or hosted platform will typically be something like Kajabi, Simplero, Kartra, things like that. So that's the first big decision. We actually dove into more of the pros and cons of using a hosted platform versus being self-hosted all the way back in episode 24 of the Membership Guys podcast, if you want to look that up. Alternatively, head to themembershipguys.com slash 312 to get the show notes for today's episode, as well as all the links, including the one to episode 24, where we go more into this decision. Ultimately, though, it does come down to convenience versus control. Hosted platforms are a lot more convenient. You can literally go, and as long as you've got the money to sign up today, you can have a membership, essentially the engine of a membership, ready within minutes. And all you need to do is add your content. So if your content's already created, your membership can just be up and running in no time. In the self-hosted route, it doesn't take as long to get things up and running. Again, if you're part of a community like Membership Academy where we've got tutorials, we've got the step-by-step -step on how to set up the tech, we provide things like a WordPress theme for memberships, having access to all of that sort of stuff will definitely simplify and speed up the process if you go down the self-hosted path, but there still is a lot more to do with that option versus a hosted platform. So that is the first and biggest tech decision that you need to make when starting out. And actually, this decision will inform whether some of the other decisions you need to make are actually relevant or not. So if you're going with a hosted platform, you've got nothing to build. You don't have to build any of the website itself. And so the next decision, which is, do you actually build it yourself or do you hire a developer or a professional this is a decision you're only really going to face if you are self-hosting your own membership site. If you are using a hosted platform like Kajabi, like Simplero, you don't need to build anything, so you don't need to think about this. But if you are running your site yourself, it's self-hosted. Decision number two, are you going to try and build this yourself or are you going to pay someone to take it all off your hands? Now, honestly, this decision, nine times out of 10, comes down to money. Do you have the budget to hire someone to take care of the setup, to research the best plugins, to take your needs, go away, find the right combination of tech, set it up, install it, customize the look and feel, set up all the different options in the configuration to meet your requirements, and then your website's done and all you personally need to do is go in there and add your content. If you have the budget to do that, I think pretty much anyone would happily hire somebody to take care of all of the tech headaches for you. So if you are cash rich, but time poor, then you're probably going to hire someone. If you're the reverse of that, if you're time rich, but you're cash poor, then likelihood is you're going to need to build your site yourself. And again, if you're completely new to all of this, it might get overwhelming, particularly with some of the nitty gritty decisions and little things like making sure all your plugins play well together and all that sort of stuff. 
once again, Membership Academy has tutorials and a section within our community for tech support that can help you to navigate this. And indeed, most members who come through Membership Academy, they end up building their own membership sites with our help, with our instruction and guidance and the resources that we provide. So you don't need to be a tech whiz to do it yourself, but you do need to recognize that if it's not your zone of genius, if it's not your area of expertise, then you're probably not going to enjoy this part of the process. I actually had my friend Martin and Lindsay from Jammy Digital, which is a web development agency. They joined me back in episode 241 to talk about whether or not you should hire a web designer or a web developer from the get-go. Now, actually, you'll hear from that conversation if you go back and listen to episode 241, that in a lot of cases, we would veer towards recommending doing things yourself. And the big part of the reason is if you are using something like WordPress, there are so many fantastic plugins and themes that other developers have created, which are extremely powerful off the shelf. So they take care of so much of what you might need to do on your site. They take care of all of that and you simply need to install them, tweak some settings, and then you're good to go. The standard of website themes for WordPress, the standard of plugins, membership plugins, community plugins, what they are capable of doing and how they've been designed in a way to make it so that someone without a huge amount of technical knowledge can accomplish great things and impressive complex things without it actually feeling complicated. All of this really puts a lot of power at your fingertips, regardless of how tech savvy you are or not. And especially if you have tutorials to follow and if you have people you can ask questions if you get stuck, then it's far more feasible for you to build a pretty powerful complex website yourself using these tools, using these plugins, than it might have been five years ago, 10 years ago. So again, that's the second big decision. If you are going down the self-hosted route, are you going to build things yourself or are you going to hire someone to do it for you? If you have the budget, if money is no object in this, then hire someone to do it for you. Even if you could do it yourself, it's going to save you time because you can be creating your content, you can be working on your launch plans, your marketing plans while your website is being built for you. But if you don't have the money, then don't fret because it's easier than it's ever been to create something incredible if you're doing it yourself. It's easier than it's ever been to do that these days with plugins, with themes, with tutorials that you get in sites like Membership Academy to help you along the way. The third big tech decision that you'll need to make relates to your domain name. So this is your website address, the URL that people use to access your membership. This is probably one of those questions that comes up more than any other question uh, within our communities, both our free Facebook group where we've got nearly 20,000 people in there and inside our members community too. What should your domain name be? Should it be, if you've already got a website, say you've already you know, got a blog or maybe you've got a company where you're offering services and you've already got you know, mybusiness.com, should your membership also be on mybusiness.com? Should it just be a section of that website? Should it be a subdomain? So that would be members.mybusiness.com. Should it be a subdirectory? So mybusiness.com forward slash members. Or should it be a different domain name altogether? So you've got two websites, mybusiness.com and mymembership.com. That latter approach is the one that we have here at the Membership Guys. So we have the membershipguys.com, which is the blog, podcast, free resources, info about us, the brand, all that sort of stuff. And then our membership is at membershipacademy.com. For us, that decision was largely a one uh, based around branding. It was a branding Based decision but also we knew we wanted to do fairly complex stuff and custom stuff with the academy website and if we tried to crowbar both the public membership guys website and the membership academy community if we try to have them all in the same spot then it would just get messy so there's a, a, a lot of tech benefits to having them separate as well but there's so many different elements so many different potential implications of how you choose to set up your domain name for your membership in you know in relation to other 
websites you may have. There's a lot of different aspects and benefits, pros and cons that most people don't think of. I'd actually encourage you, if you want to dive deep on this, to listen to episode 296. So that's the membershipguys.com slash 296 for a bit of a deeper dive into what, you know, where should your membership live? What should its domain name be? Subdomain, same domain, new domain, subfolder. <laughs> this is a big decision. And yeah, it's one of those things people struggle with. So check out episode 296 for a little more on that. And this is a decision that will affect you regardless of whether you're self-hosting or whether you're using an online platform. So yeah, this is something that we all have to figure out and make a decision on when we are setting up a membership site. Big decision number four is a one where we're starting to get specific. So this decision relates to which plugin or theme combination should you use if you're going self-hosted or which platform should you use if you're going down the hosted route. So this is basically, okay, if you've decided you're self-hosted or hosted platform, what does that mean? What What is your actual choice of tech under that banner so if you're going down the self-hosted wordpress route that means what is the membership plugin that you use and what is the theme that you use they're the two big pieces of the puzzle for a self-hosted website if you're running wordpress and if you're going down the hosted platform route which platform so that's the fault decision if you know what the type of setup you're going to have is Okay, what is the actual specific option we're going to use to power our membership? What plugin, what platform? So this is definitely where people get stuck, particularly when it comes to things like WordPress membership plugins, because there are a lot of them. Even with us distilling all the different plugins that are out there down to a short list of the best, you still got a dozen or so to choose from. And really your choice is going to largely come down to your requirements. What features and functionality do you absolutely need? Like what can your membership model simply not do without? What payment processes are you using? So are you using PayPal, Stripe? Are you using payment processes that are prolific in other parts of the world. So quite often when we talk about this stuff, the focus is on the Western world because a lot of the software that's built is built by developers based in this part of the world. However, if you're uh, looking to cater to, for example, uh, the market in China, if your main audience is based in China, your membership is going to service that audience, then your payment providers are going to be completely different. They're probably ones that a lot of Western developers will not have heard of and therefore will not support within their plugin or platform. So all these kind of things you need to you need to know, you need to figure out, and chances are you already know this going in. Same as uh, your email marketing service. So if you're using MailChimp, if you're using ActiveCampaign, if you're using Entreport or ConvertKit, Again, some plugins, some platforms will support some of those. Some will support others. Some will support all of them. So the decisions around which plugin or which platform that you actually use will come down to your individual requirements and the other tech that you need this plugin or platform to play with. And when it comes to the other tech, it really does come down to the payment processor and your email marketing software, your email CRM. Again, the choices for either plugins or for platforms are plentiful. And even when narrowed down to the best of them, still, there's enough to choose from to make this a difficult decision. Now, when it comes to WordPress membership plugins, for example, we've taken a lot of time to put together a comparison chart, uh, along with a little guide to help you to make that decision and the sort of things you need to think about and stuff you can test out or try out in order to validate whether a particular plugin is good for you. We put together that whole guide. It's basically a buyer's guide to membership plugins for WordPress. You can get that for free over at the membershipguys.com forward slash plugins. So yep, completely free. Pop your email address in. We'll send you the link and that's it you you will have the feature comparison guides so we basically stack the best wordpress membership plugins side by side and break down these are the features they have this is what they don't have these are the services they integrate with and all of that sort of stuff so that'll really help you narrow that decision 
down as well. We also have a number of reviews for WordPress membership plugins, again, at themembershipguys.com. And if you go to themembershipguys.com forward slash toolkit, then you'll find a full kind of mini directory, really, of the different tools and tech, hosted platforms, plugins, themes, all that sort of stuff that we recommend, that we know are solid. You'll find those recommendations there as well. So that's themembershipguys.com forward slash toolkit for, again, that directory of membership tech that you might look to use and themembershipguys.com slash plugins to get your hands on our plugin comparison chart and our buyer's guide to WordPress membership plugins because this is a tricky decision. We're really getting into the nitty gritty there. There's a lot of plugins out there, a lot of themes to choose from, a lot of platforms that are great. Kajabi is fantastic, Simplero is fantastic, Thinkific is fantastic for courses and stuff like that. But if they don't tick the specific boxes that you have in terms of your features and functionality requirements, then they might be the wrong choice for you. Same for WordPress plugins. You know, we use MemberPress for Membership Academy and MemberPress is a great all-rounder. Our business model is fairly straightforward. It works well for us. We don't need any extremely complex functionality with our membership. And it might be that if we had a really specific requirement for our site, that might actually render MemberPress a terrible choice for us. And so, again, there is no one-size-fits-all plugin or platform that will be the best for everyone. It's all down to individual requirements. So make sure you check out the membershipguys.com slash plugins and the membershipguys.com slash toolkit to help you to narrow down those tech decisions. Whether you're self-hosted and you need to pick your membership plugin or whether you're going down the hosted platform route and you need to choose which platform it's going to be, these resources will help you to do that. And then the fifth and final big key decision that you need to make when building your membership relates to your community. Most online memberships will have a community hub. They'll have a place that their members can go to. They can ask questions. They can post messages, comment on each other's discussions, get to know each other, connect to each other's profiles, all of that sort of stuff. Now, in the past, this decision has essentially boiled down to two options. Facebook group, or an online forum. These days, there's probably a few more options in the mix as well, because I think there's a growing anti-Facebook sentiment. There's more people who are finding that their audience don't want to be on Facebook or that they themselves as a membership owner don't want to be on Facebook. And so alternatives to Facebook, such as platforms like Circle or Tribe, which are, again, essentially, they are hosted platforms for communities. They're a little bit of a combination between Facebook and uh, a forum setup. Platforms like Mighty Networks and so on. So it's not so much Facebook group or forum these days. Generally speaking, it's external community. So that's a community hub that sits outside of your website. So that could be a Facebook group. It could be Mighty Networks. It could be Slack. It could be Circle. It could be a Discord server, but it's external. It's not integrated as part of your website it's different tech it's elsewhere perhaps your members will need a different account to access it versus internal community so that would be an on-site forum so a section where you have a forum software installed that uses the traditional kind of discussion forum structure of sections, topics, comments. Um, it might be something like Buddy Boss or Buddy Press, which again gives you a, a, a bit of a social network feel, but all within your own website. So there's a lot of different options there. Internal versus external is really the big decision. External, again, you kind of have the benefit of not having to worry about the tech setup. When it comes to things like Facebook groups or Slack channels, there's also the argument that if someone already is using Facebook regularly, then they're more likely to jump into the Facebook group and take part. And so you're likely to get a higher volume of engagement within a Facebook group than you might within an on-site forum where someone needs to be on your website and deliberately going into the forum with the intention of participating. Engagement and participating is a little more passive on Facebook. They'll could be scrolling through their newsfeed, 
looking at funny pictures of cats then they see a message from your private members facebook group and they put a comment on and then there's something else that they then go on to it's a little more passive they don't have to be as intentional about engaging however again that lack of control particularly with facebook groups where you're at the mercy of facebook <laughs> you're at the mercy of mark zuckerberg if he decides that they no longer want to let people run facebook groups well, then you don't get a say in that discussion and all of a sudden you don't have an outlet for your members' community. Now, that's a bit extreme, but more realistically, what will happen and what is happening with Facebook groups is they are subject to Facebook's algorithms. So Facebook decides what content from your group gets shown to people. It decides whether certain discussions show higher within your group than others whether some of them will show in your users new feed, news feeds or not so that lack of control uh, really really is a massive massive downside to having an external community solution versus having an internal one that you control again if you've got an internal on-site community there's more tech to take care of there's more maintenance you need to put a bit more effort a bit more um, thought around how you're going to get people to show up and engage within your community than perhaps you would do on the likes of facebook or even you know in a private slack channel or discord where someone who is in a whole bunch of different slack channels if you have a private member slack channel then again it's they've got the software up they're going to be on there they're in the right environment to see notifications see messages and it's a bit more passive than having to log into your membership navigate the community and take part so lots of things to consider in this discussion head over to the show notes for this episode the membershipguys.com slash 312 we've got some links to a few more things that you want to consider when deciding where to host your community hub on-site or off-site internal or external the other big thing you need to consider if you're going off-site if you're not using something like facebook where people likely already have an account if you're using something like mighty networks or you're using something like circle which is one of the newer kind of external community platforms then that means your members need to go off and create a second account so not only do they need an account to access your membership site but they might also need a an additional account a second account a separate set of login details to access the community portion so if they want to consume your content they go to one place so they've got to remember that url they go to that url they log in they consume the content but if they want to talk about it well then they've got to go to a different url log in again perhaps with different details different passwords and you know you've got that separation and that can be a little bit awkward it can be problematic so again that's something to consider um as you know the trade-off for some of the benefits you get with an off-site community hub versus having it as on-site where it's a bit more of a seamless part of your website there's no need for multiple logins no need for multiple passwords there's no need for you as the membership owner to manually add or approve the new members who join your community uh, because of course if you have an off-site community it's not controlled by your membership plugin or it's not controlled by your membership platform so all of these things and more to consider head to the membershipguys.com slash 312 to get the show notes for this episode with additional resources additional bits of info deeper dives into parts of this conversation not just for this decision about where to host your community but for all of the decisions that we've covered here today these are big big calls big big decisions on your membership tech self-hosted or hosted platform diy or hire someone to do it for you what domain setup are you going to have same domain subdomain subfolder different domain what plugin or platform are you using and where are you hosting your community they're big decisions but i do hope some of the tips and advice i've gave you during today's show will help you navigate them a little better and of course as mentioned head to the membershipguys.com slash 312 for the show notes if you want a deeper dive into any one of these discussions and get your hands on some of the multiple resources we've talked about during today's episode all right Woo. 
That was a big old tech dump, but hopefully you found today's episode useful. Hopefully it'll help point you in the right direction and make some of those tech decisions a little easier. Whether you are at the beginning of your journey or whether you've been considering mixing things up with your existing membership, then I do hope I've been able to help you today. That's it from me for this week. Please join me next week for another installment of the Membership Guys podcast. Until then, I'm out of here. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. The Membership Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be or whether your website's already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, step-by-step membership roadmap, exclusive member-only discount perks and tools, as well as our supportive, active community that will help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Membership Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership business. Check it out at membershipacademy.com.